Good morning, Kansas City. Uh, it's nine o'clock on Saturday morning. It means it's time for our live Learning Medicare class. Thank you for joining. My name is Daryl Russell. I'm a licensed agent and the, uh, oh, what am I? I don't know. I'm, it's Saturday morning. I still haven't had my cup of coffee yet. So anyway, I'm, I'm a licensed agent and the director of training here at AMS Affordable Medicare Solutions. We're an independent insurance agency that helps you learn Medicare so you can avoid costly mistakes, penalties, and uh, help maximize your Medicare coverage with confidence. So I uh, wanted to thank everyone for joining. Uh, hopefully you find the program. Uh, uh, we're getting a little internet problems issues here, excuse me. Hope you find the program uh, informative and entertaining. Medicare isn't exactly the most exciting subject, but we're gonna try to uh, uh, keep it uh, engaging and, and interesting as we go along here, so. Again, our class, uh, what you're here today for is our class called Learning Medicare. We're going to go over the A, B, C, and Ds of Medicare, Part A, Part B, Part C, Part D, as well as how Medicare supplements work, Medicare Advantage, uh, when to enroll, how to enroll, all that type of stuff so you can avoid the penalties. Um, as you go along, keep in mind that our class is going to be recorded so if you later want to uh, go back and watch the recording, you can come back to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see our, uh, our recording. So if you go to our website, which is just amskc.com, what you'll find is on our home page, we actually have a link here to our YouTube channel. So in case you're unfamiliar, couldn't remember how you got here. And right here on our YouTube channel, it shows that we're streaming live now but our, record, our previous classes are recorded. And if you come here to the recording of like our last month's July 18th, our last Saturday class, one thing I wanted to point out is <clears throat> you can ask your questions via the chat button here. So if you're on your laptop, you'll be able to ask questions there. But also, if you like our program, be sure to give us a thumbs up. You can share us with friends. But also, what some people don't realize is here in the show more section or down below, we actually put a lot of information. And then on the recording show, we actually put the timestamps for the different subjects that we cover. So, for example, if you were watching the show and you wanted to go, well, how did they talk about avoiding late Part B penalties? Rather than hunting through the recording, you can just come right here to this timestamp and it'll bring you up to that section that we covered. So it's a handy thing. We hope you find it helpful. And I just wanted to point out where that is on the uh, on our program. So oops, got lost in my, I got too many screens going on here. Okay, let's take that down. So again, if you don't mind, give us a good thumbs up. We appreciate it. It does help us um, uh, with YouTube search rankings and helps other people find us. Another thing you can do is consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We do put out uh, videos besides just the Learning Medicare class, different topics and subjects that we hope you'll find uh, helpful um, in, in that regard. Again, if you're unable to ask questions via chat, you're maybe watching on an iPad, maybe you've got a smart TV, sometimes the chat functions aren't there, you can also send your questions via email. If you just send us an email to info at AMSKC, Justin's in the control room. I'll bring him in here in a minute to say hello. Uh, but he'll convert your questions by email into, into the live broadcast. We can also receive your questions via text. So if you send a text message to 913-361-0331, let me put that number up here. So if you put the, the up here, 913-361-0331, you can send your questions via text. Justin will pick those up and relay them into the broadcast. Just to give you an idea, if you send your questions via text through the, um, the YouTube chat system, I can actually take your question and bring it up here into the, into the display of the coverage. So it's kind of neat, it's kind of helpful. It helps us, it helps you. There is about a 10 second delay sometimes between that. So I'll always try to go back if we need to. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is after we've gone through the PowerPoint slide presentation, 
we are going to open up the phone line here in our office. So we'll actually be able to take your phone calls live on the program. So if you have questions, you don't get them asked in the way you wanted to, write them down so you don't forget. And then uh, I'll show a slide up where we open up the phone line. I'll give you that phone number. You can actually call in. We've got the microphone set up to pick up the, uh, the uh, phone calls and we're gonna try it and, and see what that's done. After we're all done with the presentation question and answer, we'll help you wrap up things, help you figure out your next steps, what you may or may not need to do. Again, we've got an office here in Overland Park, Kansas. So we're right next to the High V store at 95th and Antioch. Uh, so we're more than happy to help you by the phone, face-to-face -face, or virtual meeting. So, all right, well, I've said enough here, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, got too much stuff in the way here. Saturday morning and I'm not a morning person. Anyway, our program today is Learning Medicare, uh, subtitled Medicare for the Soon to Retire. And again, it's a trademark copy of the uh, AMS Affordable Medicare Supplement uh, Insurance Agency. So what we're gonna talk about today is all found in the Medicare and you. I'm a big believer in being um, showing you where we get the information. Anyone can tell you something. I like to teach you where to find the information for yourself. So if you have a Medicare and you booklet, everything we talk about, we can reference here. This is the official US government guide to the Medicare program. Plus we also use the choosing a Medicare supplement handbook. Uh, again, a US government guide on Medicare supplements, when to enroll, so on and so forth. Again, we're independent agents. We're not connected or endorsed with the US government or the Medicare program but I like to use official government resources so that you know the information you get is credible. And again, teaching you where to find the information for yourself. If you don't have a copy of that and you'd like to get one, what you'll find is on our website, uh, and I can take you back over there real quick, but here on our website, again, just amskc.com, if you go to the home page and then look for this tab here called Helpful Resources, we actually have these documents posted. Click on the Medicare and You, it'll bring you here. Click on that and you can actually download a copy right there to your home computer. So uh, hopefully you find that helpful and, and a good uh, uh, beneficial information for you. Okay. So the four parts of Medicare, the alphabet soup, the A, B, C, D. <clears throat> Basically what we start off with here is original Medicare when it was started in 1965 was modeled after more common health insurance of the day that had two parts. Part A was your hospital coverage. Uh, and so part A of Medicare covers your brick and mortar. Part B is your medical insurance. So part A is your hospital, your skilled nursing home, that type of thing. Part B covers the doctor services you might receive in the hospital or the doctor services you might receive on an outpatient basis. And uh, I've got a red line dividing the two between A and B and C and D because part A and B are still offered and managed by CMS, uh, the federal agency that manages the Medicare program. But over here, part C, which is your Medicare Advantage plans, and then Part D, prescription drug coverage. They're on the other side of the red line because these are offered by private insurance companies who have contracts with the government to be able to offer a uh, form of the Medicare entitlement. So it's just a little bit different, but as we go through this, you'll see why that can be significant. Okay, so how am I eligible for Medicare? I'm 60, I'll be turning 65, I maybe plan on working, uh, you know, I, do I make too much money? I get these questions. Well, you're eligible for Medicare one of three ways. The very first day of the month that you turn 65, period, you're eligible for Medicare. After you've received 24 months of Social Security disability benefits, you become automatically enrolled in Medicare the first day of the 25th month. And if you should be ever diagnosed with end-stage renal disease, uh, permanent kidney failure requiring dialysis, or Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, uh, shortly after diagnosis, you receive Medicare Parts A and B automatically, again, regardless of age. 
And here we've got a mock-up of a uh, newer red, white, and blue Medicare card showing your Part A and the effective date, Part B and the effective date. And it's very important to understand that you must have both Parts A and B to be fully insured under the Medicare program. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at what you get under Part A of Medicare. Well, Part A, again, is your inpatient hospital coverage. So it starts off when you have Part A and you go into the hospital, you will have initially in 2020 a deductible of $1,408 to pay, and then Medicare picks up all the rest of your hospital charges. And then it goes into a copay. <clears throat> so there is uh, no copay to you as a Medicare beneficiary for your first 60 days of inpatient hospitalization. So you pay your deductible, but there's no additional copay. Should you go beyond 60 days of hospitalization, then there is a copay of $352 a day, and then it can increase up to $704 for days 91 through 150. But I think most people would agree it's fairly hard to get uh, hospitalized that long these days. So that's your Part A. You could see additional charges under Part B for doctor, but we're going to stick with that. Here under skilled nursing, now don't confuse this with long-term care or nursing home coverage. It means you've maybe had a, a heart attack, a stroke, maybe some physical therapy is needed because of knee surgery, and you're going to a skilled nursing home uh, that will provide that type of care. Your first 20 days of skilled nursing coverage for physical therapy under Medicare, it's covered 100%. You pay nothing. You only have a copay starting with day 21 to a total of 100 days in, in total, and you have the copay limited there. There's also home health care under Medicare. Uh, it's very limited, but you have no out-of-pocket expense for that. And then Part A also includes coverage for hospice care for the terminally ill. Excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of coffee here. Okay. <clears throat> So what do I pay for Part A? Well, most people who have worked uh, 40 quarters or 10 years of Medicare-covered employment are not charged a premium for Part A when they sign up. Uh, if you were a non-working spouse, uh, you can claim under a, a working spouse's record. So again, there's no premium payment. And there is a premium possibly for Part A if you don't have the full 40 quarters. And you can see that here listed on the screen. Okay, so that's what I get for Part A. What do I get under Part B, my medical coverage? <clears throat> well, again, <clears throat> this is your outpatient medical coverage. Excuse me. So this is all of your doctor's charges. <clears throat> it starts off with an annual deductible, and everything with Medicare is typically calendar year. So if you see a, a deductible under Part B, this is calendar year. Uh, and that will change a little bit every year. See, uh, the government has started to uh, uh, bracket uh, the deductibles to inflation. The standard premium for Medicare Part B for most people in 2020 is $144.60 per month, and that's assuming your income is below the guidelines here on the screen. <clears throat> and your Part B premium can go up yearly. It doesn't always, but it can. And you can pay your Part B premium through a Social Security deduction if you're drawing your Social Security benefits when you are on Medicare. If not, uh, the Medicare uh, agency will send you a quarterly bill. Or you can also authorize Easy Pay, where they'll just take the deduction out uh, monthly from your bank or checking account. So what does Part B coverage include? Well, after that deductible, Medicare will pay 80% of what they approve and you, the Medicare beneficiary, pay the other 20%. And the charges under Part B would be your doctor's services. Doctor services possibly while you're in the hospital, your doctor visits there at his office, uh, same-day surgeries, outpatient therapy. Part B covers things for durable medical equipment. That would be things like wheelchairs, hospital beds, uh, walkers, um, lift chairs, uh, oxygen equipment, CPAP machines. Uh, those types of equipment for medical services. Your emergency room visits are under Part B. Most of your outpatient services, like a same-day surgery, an MRI, CAT scan, x-rays, lab testing, all those types of things are generally billed to Part B of Medicare. 
uh, and there is no cap on the 20% and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So let's give you an example of a Part B charge. Uh, let's assume you went to the doctor and he billed $250 for his visit. Well, it's no big secret that doctors and hospitals bill more than what Medicare wants to pay. So Medicare might receive that bill and say, well, they only approve $100 of that total $250. Well, Medicare is going to pay 80% or $80, and you're going to pay the $20, 20% left over. And again, this assumes you've already satisfied your calendar year deductible under Part B. The key point here is the amount over the $100 that Medicare approved, anything above that is written off by the provider. Nobody owes that. You don't have to pay it. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, that would be a common example of what's called Medicare assignment. Okay. So let's talk about, well, what's not covered by Part A and B. Well, long-term nursing home care. Now, this is convalescent care. Uh, Medicare does cover skilled therapy, but that's medically necessary to get you better, get you home. Uh, but they're not going to cover long-term nursing home care due to old age or frailty. Routine dental, dentures, routine vision, cosmetic surgery, acupuncture, hearing aids, other types of things. Uh, those are the more common items listed, but there is a more comprehensive list on the official website of the Medicare program, which is medicare.gov. Okay, well, Daryl, it sounds good enough. I'm turning 65. I, I really don't have much choices. How do I get signed up for Medicare? What do I need to do? Well, for some people, it's automatic. If you're drawing your Social Security benefits when you turn 65, or for railroad retirees, railroad retirement board benefits, three months before your 65th birthday, you'll automatically get your red, white, and blue Medicare card in the mail with a little welcome kit, and you're good to go. But some people do need to sign themselves up, and those would be people who, when they turn 65, are not drawing their Social Security benefits. And even though you might be working, when you turn 65, you are still eligible for Medicare, and you can enroll even if you are continuing to work beyond age 65. Okay, so Daryl, that sounds great. I'm, uh, I still work on the farm. We do other things. I'm a realtor, what have you. I'm not going to draw my Social Security till 67, 68, 69. How do I sign myself up? Well, Social Security is a totally separate agency from uh, Medicare and CMS. But they're agencies that are joined at the hip, as the saying goes. So Social Security was tasked uh, with the process of signing people up for Medicare when Medicare came out in 1965, and that's not changed. So here I've got a screenshot of the homepage for the Social Security uh, Administration. And here in this corner, you see this little tab called Medicare Enrollment. If you click on that tab there, it will take you to the web page on Social Security site that allows you to quickly and easily enroll yourself electronically into Medicare Parts A and B, uh, and it takes 10 minutes. It's a beautiful program. So once you get in, you're going to look for this button here. It says Apply for Medicare Only. Occasionally, I've had people get a little anxious about this because they're like, I don't want to start my Social Security just yet. Nope, this is only for your Medicare benefits. It will have absolutely nothing to do with uh, your Social Security benefits if you're delaying them. It's just a very convenient way to get yourself signed up and get you the coverage under Medicare Part A and B that you want. Okay, <clears throat> well there can be some timing windows, enrollment periods involved with Medicare, and it's important to understand these, and we'll go over these in a little bit more detail towards the end of the program. But when you're brand new to Medicare, uh, so in this particular case here, I'm turning 65, and let's say I'm turning 65 in August, okay? You have a seven-month window that you can sign yourself up for Medicare Parts A and B without any penalties uh, financially. And I like to think of the month that you turn 65 as your center point. So if I'm turning 65 in August, I have the month of August to enroll myself as well as the three months before. Okay, so if we look at the center point here, month of August, this is under the delayed start in red. 
So what this means is if I waited till August uh, to do the paperwork for Social uh, excuse me, if I waited till August to do the paperwork for Medicare Parts A and B, my Medicare coverage will be effective the first day of September, the first day of the next month. Had I signed up for Medicare in the month of July, June, or as early as May 1st, because you can do this as early as three months before the month you turn 65, my Medicare would have been effective the first day of August because that's the month I turned 65. If you wait after August into September, then you can still enroll. There's no financial penalties, but your Part B effective date is delayed up to two months or up to three months after you fill out your paperwork. So uh, it can be a little bit of a problem for folks uh, that are expecting coverage earlier uh, than the delay. So I try to encourage folks to sign up if you need to and you want it uh, before the month you turn 65. Okay, and this again talks a little bit more about that. Let's go in. Uh, Part B late penalties. I always get a lot of anxiety from folks. How do I sign up to avoid penalties? My neighbor has all these types of things. Well, let's talk about that. Your penalty for not signing up or your financial penalty for not signing up for Part B during your seven-month IEP, that seven-month period we just talked about, it's calculated as 10% more of your premium charge for each full 12-month period you could have had coverage and didn't, uh, and did not have other credible coverage, and we'll address that here real quickly. And you may have that penalty for as long as you're enrolled in Part B. Uh, there's also another hic hiccup to that, in that if you miss that seven month window, even by a day, and then you decide, oops, I do need to add Part B, there's a specific time of the year, the general enrollment period, which is January, February, or March of each year, that you can actually request enrollment in Part B, and it doesn't become effective to the following July. Now, your Part B late penalty will be waived. You will not be charged it if you had coverage through your employer through either yours or your spouse's active employment. We're going to talk quite a bit about that. So here we're going to give you an example of what that Part B penalty financial might look like. So we've made up Mary here. Uh, she delayed signing up for Part B two full years after she was eligible and she did not have employer coverage through hers or her spouse's active employment. She had Part A, she just didn't want to pay for Part B, didn't understand, didn't want to pay the premium, what have you. Now she's figured out she needs Part B and she wants to sign up. So she's going to be assessed a 10% surcharge to her standard Part B premium for each full 12 months. The penalties added to her monthly premium, so assuming she had two full years, two full 12-month periods, we take the standard premium in 2020 of 144.60. We're going to take that times 20%, which comes up to $28.92. So added to the standard premium is 173.52, and the U.S. government programs round up to the next dime. They like nice even numbers, so the rounding up would go to 173.60. So Mary would pay that premium, and then if there was an increase in her Part B down the road due to inflation or Congress raises the Part B rates, the 20% would be based on the new uh, uh, Part B charges. Okay, so again, if you go ahead and uh, sign up when you're first eligible, you can delay your Medicare due to active employment, but uh, that's where you run into the problems is, is when you don't. Okay, so let's talk about Part B IRMAs because that's another important aspect of Medicare. Uh, IRMAs are uh, income-related Medicare monthly adjustment amounts. They're all based upon your AGI or your adjusted gross income from your federal tax return from two years ago. And there is an appeal process. We've got those forms posted on our Helpful Events webpage. All IRMAs are paid directly to CMS, the federal agency that manages the Medicare program. So why is that important? Well, because this is what IRMA means. Uh, when I mentioned for most people, you pay the standard premium of 144.60 for your Part B. 
However, <clears throat> in 2020, if we look back at your 2018 tax return and you are filing jointly, but you're one penny over 170000 your Part B premium now goes to $202.40 rather than one forty four sixty, And you can see there's uh, four more additional income brackets there. Uh, and yes, in Southern Johnson County, we've run across a few folks that were paying close to $500 a month for their Part B premiums. It is a rolling two-year look back, so in 2021, it'll be based upon your 2019 tax returns. Okay, so Daryl, um, I like working. I'm not planning on drawing my Social Security till 69, 70. Uh, how does working beyond age 65 impact my Medicare decisions? Well, first of all, you need to decide, do you want to stay on your employer's plan? Or do you want to opt out of it and go on to Medicare? And this is a very simplification, but typically people will stay on their employer's plan because they may have a younger dependent that needs to be covered under that employer plan. They prefer it versus what's open on the open market, uh, so on and so forth. In some cases, the cost to you to be on the employer plan or the coverage may be something that you prefer. It's cheaper than going on Medicare. You like the coverage, uh, what have you. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to personal choice. But in some cases, when people do the math, it may be cheaper and they may have better coverage to decline the employer's insurance and sign up for Medicare Part A and B even though you're continuing to work. Uh, never assume that it's not. I've, I've found uh, in some cases people have paid $400 a month too much for employer insurance versus what they could have gotten under Medicare. So and we can help you evaluate that uh, very quickly and easily. Secondly, if you're not drawing the employer's insurance, hey, ask them. If I sign up for Medicare and go off employer coverage and you don't have to pay that uh, medical premium for me anymore, can I get a raise? Never hurts to ask. The worst thing they can do is tell you no, right? Okay, so when you work beyond age 65, if you decide to sign up for Medicare Part A and B, you need to ask yourself a couple questions. Number one is, do you have a high deductible health plan through your employer and a health savings account that you put tax-free money into for retirement to help pay your Medicare expenses? Don't confuse health savings account, HSA, with FSA. They're too different. But if you do sign up for Part A and you're working and you're staying on your employer's plan and you want to contribute money into your health savings account, that can be a real big problem. OK, uh, Part A could negate that. And you can see that reference on page 19 of your Medicare and you. Uh, also, you may want to not sign up for Medicare Part B if you have employer coverage through yours or your spouse's employment. And you're going to continue that beyond your age 65 Medicare eligibility. So here I've taken a screenshot from uh, page 19 of the Medicare and you which Medicare is letting you know that if you are still working, and that's the key here, employer coverage due to employment, it may be to your benefit not to sign up for Medicare A and B, but there is a note here, and I stress this over and over and over again, coverage based on current employment does not include COBRA. And we're starting to see more and more of that here locally. Uh, people uh, losing their employment uh, with COVID, with mergers, acquisitions, so on and so forth. Retiree coverage, VA, individual coverage, that would be things like uh, Obamacare through the exchanges. Uh, all of these things are not based on active employment. And if you have them, great, you wanna use them, but you will need to sign up, generally speaking, for your part A and B to avoid problems and late penalties down the road. So here we've got a grid, and again, this comes from page 20 of the Medicare and You booklet. So it just shows you, according to federal laws, how does other insurance work with Medicare? What are the rules? So rule number one is if you have retiree insurance, meaning you're not working there anymore, but your employer has granted you insurance coverage under their group plan after you leave. 
Medicare pays first, you must enroll in both parts A and B in order for it to work and not have problems. If you're still working and your employer has more than 20 employees, then the group health plan pays first and you can in fact delay part A and B, no problem, sign up for it once the employer coverage ends, life is beautiful, it, it works wonderfully. But you notice down below that it says, well what if my employer has fewer than 20 employees? Well in that case, Medicare pays first and you must enroll in part A and B. So we can help guide you through some of those processes uh, but again, if you look in the official U.S. government guide, the rules are there. It'll help you make good decisions. So, okay, great. Uh, well, Daryl, I'll follow all the rules, but what happens when my employer coverage ends? Well, you'll get a special enrollment period uh, because you've lost coverage due to no fault of your own. You're retired, and you'll be able to sign up for Part A or, and or B without a penalty within eight months of losing your coverage based upon active employment. Why eight months? Because that's the way they wrote the law. Most people aren't going to go eight months without coverage, but you can technically go that long uh, to enroll in Part B without having a, being assessed a late penalty. Again, if I haven't beat this into the ground enough, COBRA or retiree coverage are not based on active employment, and you may not get a special enrollment period at that time. So. Uh, whenever you're faced with Cobra, just remember you don't want to get bit by the Cobra snake. You must have Part B uh, to go with it. And again, a little information here on the general enrollment period. Okay, so that's that. Uh, we do have a nice video on our YouTube page that walks you through the process of signing up for Part B once employer coverage ends, so you might want to take a look at that later on. Well, how does Part D drug coverage work? Uh, I've got the basics of A and B. You've scared me a little bit about signing up right, and then not intentionally. It's, it just is important to understand. So when it comes to Part D drug coverage, there's two ways under Medicare that you can receive coverage for prescriptions. Number one is a standalone plan. Uh, this is a plan you buy. It has its own separate premium, its own separate card. All it does is prescription drug coverage. And usually people are combining this with their red, white, and blue Medicare card with or without a supplement. These again are all offered by private insurance companies. And just here in the local Kansas City metro area, there's actually 28 different uh, uh, combinations of Medicare Part D plans offered by various different companies. There's also my Part D can be built into a Medicare Advantage plan, which is sometimes referred to as Part C of the Medicare program. And we'll go over that here uh, also in the program. So how am I eligible? What do I have to do to be able to sign up for a Part D plan? Well, number one, for a standalone plan, you simply have to be enrolled in Part A of Medicare. You don't need B, most people do. Uh, but you don't, you technically only need A to sign up for a Part D drug plan. To be eligible to join a Medicare Advantage plan that has the Part D drug coverage built in, in that case, you do have to have both Parts A and B, and you always have to live in the plan service area. Uh, it'll be in the, uh, the uh, brochures for it, but service area typically is uh, for Part D plans state specific. For Advantage plans, it could be a specific county or set of counties. And you must, if you want Part D drug coverage, nothing about it is automatic. You must pick a plan and enroll if you're going to uh, have coverage under it. So Part D has a lot of confusing factors and stages to it. Uh, we're going to go over the standard benefit in 2020. This is right out of the Medicare and U booklet. So you have a monthly plan premium, and that will vary with the plan you choose. And then you'll have stage one, which is a deductible phase in 2020. The deductible is 435. That's the minimum. Uh, companies could offer less deductible than that. Companies could also eliminate the deductible to try to attract more membership. But 435 as a deductible is the highest it could be. After your deductible, if you have one, you go to stage two, which is the co-payment phase. That's where you're going to pay a little bit and the plan's going to pay the other majority of it. And then stage three is the coverage gap. It used to be uh, known as the, the donut hole. 
It used to be a much bigger deal. Nowadays, it's not, and we'll go over that. Um, and then there's some spending limits and then catastrophic coverage. So what does all this mean? Well, there's a lot of numbers in here, and you can read it out of the book, but every time I do, this is what I get from people. Huh? So I've come up with a paraphrase to make it a little bit easier to understand. Once your Part D coverage begins, your Part D plan gives you a checkbook. And you can pay for your prescription drugs under Part D for the calendar year out of that checkbook. And the checkbook has $4,020 in it, and you cannot add more money to that available balance. So when you go into the drugstore, the total cost of your drug is deducted each time you fill your prescription, including the deductible if you have one that is subtracted from your checkbook balance, as well as your copayment, a fixed dollar amount, a $5 copay, a $10, a flat dollar amount would be an example of a copay. Or in some cases, you may have a coinsurance, a set percentage. So for example, let's say your drug costs $100 and your particular plan has no deductible. So the first time you go to fill that, even if you have a copay of $25, the total cost of $100 is subtracted from your available balance. So you pay your part, you pay your $25, the plan pays 75, but the total of $100 is deducted from your available balance. So for as long as you have a positive balance in your checkbook, you only pay the copay or the coinsurance amount when you fill your prescription. And so if your math is good, uh, the total available is $4,020 for calendar year 2020. So if you divide 4,020 by 12 months, it means on average you would have to spend more than $335 uh, each month to use up your checkbook before the end of the calendar year. Now, should you use up your calendar year? That's <clears throat> what we just went through was part one and two, okay? But if you use up your full balance and there's calendar year left, now you've gone into stage three, commonly referred to as the coverage gap or the donut hole of Medicare Part D. And people were very anxious about this years ago. It's changed quite a bit uh, with recent legislation because originally under Part D, when you went into the coverage gap or the donut hole, you had to pay 100% of your prescription costs while you were in the coverage gap. But now in 2020 and moving forward, uh, you still have coverage in the coverage gap. You, the, you pay 25% of the uh, drug amount. The insurance company, the Part D plan, uh, they all have to discount the other 75%. So when you go into the coverage gap, you might see a change in your copay or coinsurance. It could go up slightly. It could go down a little bit, but you still have coverage. It's not, uh, you're, you're not left holding 100% of the, of the bag like it was years ago. So um, don't get anxious or excited about the Part D coverage gap anymore is what I'm trying to get at. So if you're in the coverage gap, stage three, what you pay, the discounts you get, all are added up. And if it comes to $6,350 and there's still calendar year left, then you move into what's called the catastrophic phase or stage four. And during this period, your cost of your medicine goes down dramatically. You pay 5% or the greater of $8.95 for brand name, $3.60 for each generic drug. But your Part D is calendar year, so remember that's going to start over every January. Okay, so I know that was kind of clear as mud, but again, the program is recorded, so you can go back, and if you ever have a question, uh, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email. We're more than happy to uh, help answer your questions and, and get you going in that regard. So, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Every Saturday morning, I seem to have just an awful dry throat. Forgive me, folks. So Part D covers all of your prescription brand name and generic drugs that are approved by the FDA and sold in the United States. You cannot use your Part D plan to buy drugs from Canada or another foreign country. Insulin and supplies of insulin, there's a wide range of rules, but uh, all the plans must cover uh, the drugs in all of the CMS categories. 
Uh, each plan will have what's called a formulary. A formulary is just a fancy name for a list of drugs covered by the plan. So you want to look to make sure your particular prescription is covered on your plan's formulary. If it's not on the list, the plan does not have to pay. And the formularies can change every year. When you sign up for a Part D plan, whether it's standalone or built into an Advantage plan, uh, every fall uh, before October 1, the plan is required to mail you a notice of your changes for the following year. So that way, if you don't agree, you don't like the changes, you can see about switching to a different plan. And we often help people with that process. Okay, so what drugs are not covered under Part D? <clears throat> well, you can see the list here. Um, uh, anorexia, weight loss, weight gain, uh, ED drugs. They were covered the very first year in 2006. Then Congress took them out, moving in 2007 on. Cosmetic drugs, prescription vitamins, that type of thing. Uh, so for most people, it's not a big deal. Okay, well, we've uh, gone over some of the basics of Medicare Part D. So let's talk about the Part D late penalties, because those are also uh, a potential uh, mistake out there. So how does a Part D late enrollment penalty work? Well, it's a higher premium added to your charge if you wait, and it's 1% of the base beneficiary premium added for each month you could have had Part D coverage, but didn't, and didn't have other credible coverage somewhere else. The base premium changes every year. It's set by Congress. In 2020, that amount is $32.74, and it can and usually does change every year. Now, keep in mind, if you've had credible drug coverage somewhere else, uh, your, your uh, uh, late penalty is waived. Just got a question in here, so let me back up. Okay, so Jean threw in a question here. She wants to know if prescription vitamins are covered under Part B. Okay, that's a great question, Jean. Let's go back just to here. And there we go. <clears throat> so your prescription vitamins are one of the things that are not covered. Occasionally I've seen people that are taking niacin or prescription, um, oh, it's, a, it's an iron supplement, and it does come by, per, by prescription, but it's a vitamin. So unfortunately, under current Part D rules, that would not be under your uh, Part D coverage. Uh, but from what I've seen, it is relatively low cost, so it shouldn't be a, a huge issue. Okay, let's go back. Here's about where we were at here. So, <clears throat> Part D late enrollment penalty. Uh, again, if you had credible drug coverage somewhere else, and that's why you didn't sign up for Part D, uh, you won't be assigned a penalty or it'll be waived. Credible drug coverage includes things like former employer or union coverage, uh, TRICARE for active duty retire or military retirees, Indian Health Services, Tribal Health Services, VA drug coverage, as well as individual coverage through the uh, insurance exchanges. Okay, well let's take another look at Part D IRMAs. We talked about the extra premium charge for high income earners under Part B. Well, unfortunately, the same thing does apply to Part D drug coverage. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Here is that same chart. It's again a two-year rolling look back. So as long as your 2018 return was below 170,000 joint, 85,000 single, you'll pay just your plan's Part D drug premium. But again, if you're one penny over, then you're going to pay your plan's premium, YPP, plus an extra $12.40 and again, you can see the additional uh, brackets for um, the IRMAs based upon your income. Again, it's a rolling two-year, so at some point it could go away, and you can file an appeal. Again, we have those appeal forms uh, and a lot of other helpful resources listed on our helpful resources page on our website. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about extra help for low-income people. Uh, we've talked about the high-income charges. Uh, there's a lot of folks running around out there who do have some issues with their finances. So extra help is a U.S. government program. This is not insurance coverage. <clears throat> uh, you're not going to get it through an, an agency or anything like that. This is part of your federal uh, entitlement benefits under the Medicare program. 
It's sometimes referred to as LIS, and it's all based upon your income. Uh, you can enroll very easily. You can enroll on the Social Security website. You can call 1-800-MEDICARE, and they'll take your information over the phone. Uh, here we've got a sample of the income limits. So for 2020, if your income is at or about these levels, it may be to your benefit to inquire about extra help. It could dramatically lower the cost of your prescriptions, waive a deductible, pay your premium. There's a lot of different things it can do for you. Uh, and again, it takes about 15 minutes to apply over the phone with the uh, Medicare uh, agency. We can help you if you need a little help with that. Okay, so while we're talking about extra help programs for people with lower incomes, let's go ahead and talk about Medicaid briefly here. Sometimes people will confuse Medicare with Medicaid. They, they're very similar sounding. Well, you qualify for Medicare based upon turning 65 or disability that we mentioned. Uh, it has nothing to do with income. Medicaid is free or low-cost care that comes to people solely based upon their income. It has nothing to do with necessarily with age. It's managed by the various different states and it provides coverage to low-income people, families with children, pregnant women, the elderly, sometimes people with disabilities. So again, it's just a program for low-income adults below a certain uh, income threshold. So while they sound similar, <clears throat> they are two very distinctly different federal entitlement programs that provide coverage to basically two different populations. And so while it is possible to have Medicare and Medicaid at the same time, most people do not. Okay. <clears throat> Boy. <clears throat> Something about my voice in the morning that does not get along with me. Excuse me, folks. Well, now let's go ahead and take a step back, and we're going to take a look at your insurance company options where Medicare is concerned. How does Medicare Advantage work? How does Medicare Supplement? How do these all fit in with my red, white, and blue Medicare card? Well, here from, uh, if you're in the Medicare and you booklet in the first couple of pages, uh, it's got this graph, and it's showing you that there's two ways that you get your coverage under Medicare. And I've got the red line down the middle here because they don't mix. Uh, for Star Trek fans here, this is matter and antimatter. We don't cross the red line. So we start off with option one. Option one means I'm going to enroll in Medicare Parts A and B, pay my Part B premium, and I'm going to continue to use my red, white, and blue Medicare card when I go to the hospital, the doctor's office, and I'm going to uh, pay the deductibles, the co-insurance, co-payments that set forth in original Medicare under parts A and B that we went over early on in the presentation. Now I can choose to decide, do I wanna add a standalone part B plan? If I do, I'm gonna pick my plan, fill out the enrollment forms, get a new card for just the part B to add to my Medicare card, and typically have another premium. Then I'm also going to make a final decision. Do I want to cover the deductibles, the 20% of Medicare uh, myself, self-insure it, or do I choose to enroll in a Medicare supplement, a plan that will pick up what, what red, white, and blue Medicare doesn't pay? If I do, I'm going to pick my plan, fill out the enrollment forms, I'll get a third card, and I'll pay a third premium. This works very well. In this arrangement, I typically have very little out-of-pocket cost uh, when I go to the doctor and hospital because I'm paying that Medicare supplement premium. My other option on the other side of the red line would be to go into a Medicare Advantage plan. I still have to enroll in original Medicare Parts A and B. I still have to pay my Part B premium, but I can select a private insurance company under the Medicare Advantage program to provide me coverage for all of my services under Part A, hospital, B, doctor, and typically they include Part D all in one card. So I'll get a brand new card from my Medicare Advantage plan and that card becomes my Medicare card and it's the only card I show to my doctors and hospitals. There may be a plan premium, there may not be any plan premium, and these typically will have a network or a list of doctors or hospitals 
that I either have to use to have coverage or I should use. And we'll go over that in a little bit more detail here in the end. So again, I have two options, Medicare with a drug plan, a supplement works beautifully, or do a Medicare Advantage plan and skip uh, adding a Medicare supplement. Okay, well let's take a look harder at what option one means. I'm going to pick a Medicare supplement, sometimes referred to in the booklets as a Medigap policy. So if you see Medigap, it's Medicare supplements, tomato, tomato. Okay, well what do I need to know about Medicare supplements? Well, just like the name says, they supplement Medicare. Medicare pays first. They pick up the balance uh, up to what their plan design says. These typically will increase with age. You start off at age 65 with a premium. When you're 70, it will be higher. All Medicare supplements are individual policies that by law are called guaranteed renewable, which means uh, once you have a Medicare supplement, the company can't cancel you they can't raise your rates any more than they do for anybody else. Uh, so uh, no matter what, as long as you pay your premium, you cannot lose that coverage. And all Medicare supplement plans by law are standardized. Uh, so the coverage for a plan F from company X, Y, or Z will have the exact same coverage. And we'll show you that here in just a second. And Part D drug plans do not include, or excuse me, Medicare supplement plans do not include coverage under Part D for prescription drugs. So if you pick a supplement and you want prescription drug coverage, you must pick a separate Part D drug plan to go along with that. Okay, so I said Part uh, Medicare supplements were standardized. This is a chart out of uh, the Medicare and You booklet. It's out of page 70 here. So these benefits listed here these are all the leftovers that red, white, and blue Medicare leaves you as a Medicare beneficiary to pay. The 20%, the deductibles, the copays, so on and so forth. And then over here, we have these columns, a plan A, B, C, all the way up through N. And when the government standardizes them, it means that a plan F supplement uh, would cover 100% of this cost, this cost, so on, so on, so on, so on. And so you can see a Plan F back in the day basically covered 100% of anything Medicare didn't uh, pick up 100% of. It was a very common, popular plan. Uh, and you could compare a Plan F from one company to the X, a Plan G, a Plan N, it doesn't matter. They're all going to have the same benefit to you. It's just designed to make it easier for you to price, compare, and shop. Okay. Sounds good. Whether you pick a Plan G, a Plan N, a Plan K, a Plan L, uh, you cannot be declined. You cannot be turned down for a Medicare supplement if you apply within the first six months of your Part B on your red, white, and blue Medicare card effective date. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you could have cancer, ongoing, ongoing cancer treatment, sign up for Part B August 1, you fill out your application for a Medicare supplement either before August or in August, September, October, November, December, January, that's five months, add a six month, that's February. Anytime within that six month period, your application is your name, address, how you want to pay for it. There's no health questions. Everything's covered. No problems. After you've waited six months of your Part B effective date, then the Medicare supplement company can ask you health questions and they can use those questions to decide if they're going to accept your coverage, reject you, or accept you but at a higher premium. Now with Medicare supplements, there are no networks. Medicare supplements supplement Medicare. So since Medicare works with just about any doctor in the United States, the Medicare supplement has to do the same thing. You don't have prior authorizations. You never have to have your doctor submit uh, a, an approval request from your Medicare supplement insurance company because Medicare doesn't do that. And you'll never need a referral from a primary care doctor, your family doctor, in order to see a specialist under a Medicare supplement plan. Basically, they're designed to cover all or most all of the deductibles and coinsurance left over. Uh, it's typically the most expensive monthly plan premium you can have as far as your Medicare coverage. But a lot of people like it. It's a prepaid convenience. I know what my monthly premium is. 
uh, and I know what I have to pay after that, very little in most cases. But Medicare supplements are individualized, so they only cover one person. Uh, if your spouse wants a Medicare supplement, you'll have one with one company. They'll have one typically with the same, but not always, and you'll both will pay two separate premiums. Okay, <clears throat> well, that's easy enough. Uh, what's my option two? Option two is the Medicare Advantage, so let's take a deeper dive into that. Medicare Advantage confuses people sometimes because it is a dramatically lower premium than a Medigap or Medicare supplement, and in many cases includes your Part D prescription drug coverage built in. Now, your benefits and your premiums can and typically will change slightly every calendar year, and Medicare Advantage is Medicare. You're simply getting all of your Medicare-approved services through the Advantage plan. And in some cases, they can actually provide you additional benefits not found under red, white, and blue Medicare or a supplement. Things like dental, vision, routine, hearing. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the trade-off is you will have to accept a network of uh, providers, uh, either an HMO or PPO. We'll talk more in detail about that. And in return for that small or, or no premium, you will have a co-payment or a co-insurance when you use the plan. Uh, so if you're used to company insurance nowadays where you might pay a, a $10 copay when you go to a doctor's office, Medicare Advantage will look very, very familiar to you, okay? So I'd mentioned Medicare Advantage plans use networks. Well, typically they're gonna be in an HMO network. This is where you have a tightly regulated network of doctors. Uh, typically it is the lowest uh, out-of-pocket expense in a HMO plan. And again, they typically will have the Part D drug built in on the one card. But it's a smaller network of medical providers, doctors, hospitals, labs, x-ray places. And in most cases, if you go out of the network, unless it's an emergency, you're paying 100% of that bill. Uh, HMOs have no out-of-network coverage except in emergencies or in urgent care when you're traveling and you're sick and you're away from home. Uh, you always have to have coverage under the Medicare program for that. HMOs can have some rules that you have to understand. Uh, you can be required to get prior authorization, meaning the uh, Medicare Advantage HMO plan could ask your doctor to submit forms uh, to justify why you're having that knee surgery done or a particular procedure. In some HMOs, they can require you to get a referral, or I call them a, a mother may I slip, uh, from your family doctor to see a specialist like a heart doctor, bone doctor. Uh, but they do a lot of times provide additional benefits, lower cost, uh, things like dental vision, some gym memberships, so on and so forth. So it's a matter of evaluating for your own personal needs. Now there's a second type of network for Medicare Advantage and that would be the PPO or preferred provider. And this is a, a little bit more relaxed rules and, and many people prefer this if they're picking Advantage plans because you have a, a moderate copay cost and moderate uh, out-of-pocket expense. Typically, the Part D is always built in, but it's a much richer network. You have a lot more doctors and hospitals that you can pick from. Uh, you may also have access to doctors and hospitals in the network in another state, uh, another country, uh, regions in that regard. Uh, you may have the same rules for prior authorization, but in a PPO, you never need to get referrals. The, the mother may I slip to see a specialist. And many people find it's much more uh, free. They have less restrictions than an HMO. Uh, and you, again, you can find additional benefits built into some of these plans, things like dental, vision, hearing, uh, gym membership, so on and so forth. So if I can sum it up, if you're interested in Medicare Advantage or if that becomes an option for you, in an HMO, you generally will have the lowest possible cost but the smallest network, you have to use the network so you have less control, and most everything is localized. In the PPO, people find that they have a little bit higher cost in copays, but they really like the larger network. They can go out of network. I can see a doctor and still have coverage even if he's not on the list. I pay more, but I still have coverage, okay? So, all right, well, that's how the networks work. Well, what are the basics of Medicare Advantage? Well, as I'd mentioned, Medicare Advantage is Medicare. 
You're simply getting your doctor coverage under Part B, your hospital coverage under Part A, through the Medicare Advantage Plan Network. They have a contract with CMS, the federal agency, to provide you with your government entitlements, and they must follow Medicare's rules. And Medicare does not like it when Medicare Advantage plans do not follow their rules. For billing purposes, your Advantage card is your, red, is your Medicare card. So it's the only card you show to doctors and hospitals. You keep your red, white, blue Medicare card that you got in the mail, but you keep it home, and you'll only use it if you decide to disenroll and leave the Advantage plan company. And Advantage plan companies do change their benefits every calendar year. And once a year, you'll have an opportunity to switch from one Advantage plan to the other with no health questions, uh, no change in pre-existing conditions, uh, all that type of thing. And we'll talk about that a little bit more here down the road. Okay. Well, how do I qualify for a Medicare Advantage? Do I have to answer health questions like with a Medicare supplement? No. You must live in the plan service area. Where is this plan offered? Uh, typically for Advantage plan, that will be county specific within a state. You must enroll in Medicare Part A and B, and you will always have to pay your Part B premium to the government to be eligible to qualify for a Medicare Advantage plan. But there are no health questions. Uh, doesn't matter what's going on. If you live in the county it's offered, you have your Medicare A and B, you pay that premium. In 2020, the only thing you can be asked and turned down for health-wise is end-stage renal disease, permanent kidney failure requiring dialysis, you're awaiting a kidney transplant. That, however, goes away starting January of tw 1st of 2021. So again, you can maintain, uh, uh, you can go into an Advantage plan even if you have ESRD starting next year. Okay, well, let's take a deep breath here. We've gone over a lot of stuff. I'm throwing a lot of things at you. The, the class is designed to help you learn how to figure these things out for yourself. You're not going to be a, an expert by any stretch. Uh, I sometimes refer to Medicare as the never-ending onion. You can keep peeling layer back after layer back. But uh, how do I choose? How do I choose between a Medicare Advantage plan versus a Medicare supplement? Well, let me refresh real quick. With my Medicare supplement, it's a prepaid convenience. If you like the idea of paying a monthly premium and knowing that most all uh, of my uh, out-of-pocket expense, whether I see the doctor one time or I have cancer and I have bills coming at me like crazy, it's all taken care of and you don't like network restrictions, you're probably going to like Medicare supplement. Okay, The premiums do increase and you do need to include that into your budget calculations. And Medicare supplements can only pay after Medicare approves that service. So if Medicare denies the coverage, your supplement can't pay. So for example, Medicare typically doesn't cover uh, routine dental coverage. So if you went to a dentist and you showed him your red, white, and blue Medicare card, he billed it, Medicare turned it down, your supplement can't pay is what I'm getting at. Okay. So here's some basic numbers. Now, again, this is an educational class. We're not trying to promote uh, one company plan or one company or anything like that. But I wanted to give you some numbers that you could kind of do a, a little bit of trying to help yourself sort it out. So here in Kansas, if you're on the Missouri side, the numbers will be a little bit higher. But if you were to buy a Plan G Medicare supplement at age 65, you might be somewhere around $125 every month in premium. And then if you add a Part D drug plan, that's a separate card. That's going to be about another $20 premium. So I've got a total of $145 every month and times 12 months. I'm going to have an annual cost of $1,740 just in premium. And that Plan G is going to pick up anything that Medicare doesn't pay up to, or excuse me, after I pay the first $198, my Part B deductible. After that deductible is satisfied and I pay it out of my pocket, I basically have 100% of my medical cost under Medicare picked up. So my total yearly premium plus my deductible, I've got $1,938 for me. Uh, if I have a spouse, then basically double that. 
You're still going to have drug copays separately under Part D, uh, and you don't typically have benefits for dental, vision, or hearing. But whether you go to the doctor one time, a hundred times, you pay that cost. Uh, but it is a prepaid convenience, no networks. Okay, contrast that to Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage, sometimes uh, we call it a, a pay-as-you-go plan. Uh, you can get zero premium, meaning uh, as long as you pay your Part B premium to the government, the Advantage plans don't charge you anything additional. There's federal funding that makes that work. Uh, but you have copays. So some people say, well, my premium with an Advantage plan is that copay as I go, and there is a limit on how much that can add up to. Uh, copays do change every year, and you just simply have to understand and be willing to accept I may have a network of doctors and hospitals that I need to make sure I'm using uh, to get my Medicare coverage under the Advantage plan. And if you're willing to accept the network and you like how the plan works, you may find uh, some very attractive additional benefits for hearing, gym membership, so on and so forth uh, listed out there. So I, I put together a, a scenario here to try to contrast what some out-of-pocket spending might be in a typical Advantage plan versus paying that Medicare supplement premium. So here in Kansas City area, it's very common, very easy to find an Advantage plan that does not charge you uh, an additional monthly plan premium. Again, you always pay your Part B to the government, uh, but the Advantage plans don't have you uh, pay an additional premium beyond that. So let's assume you had to see your family doctor and your plan had a $5 copay for each time and you saw your family doctor every month. So you'd have 12 $5 copays, 60 bucks, eh, not the end of the world. You might have a higher copay of $50 to see a specialist. Well, I need to see my bone doctor, I need to see my cardiologist, uh, my urologist, what have you. Well, each specialist visit, in this case here, I put in $50 as a generic number. So now I've got 200 And maybe I had to go into the hospital. Well, under Advantage plans, you'll typically have a per-day copay for the hospital, and that includes all services that you get. So you got three days in the hospital, three times 290, I've got 870, and you can see the copays for emergency room and ambulance visits. I think most people would agree this is a, a fairly uh, significant health utilization. Uh, if you use less services, you're going to have less in copays. Uh, but this adds up to $1,620 compared to possibly paying more in a, in a Medicare supplement. The trade off is uh, am I okay with the copayments? I might pay more one year than another. Do I like the networks? Do I like the prior authorization rules? And we can help you sort that out. Our goal isn't to steer you one way or the other. It's to help you understand your options and help you make the, the most intelligent choice uh, for you based on your decisions, uh, your needs, your health care budget. So uh, there's no such thing as better. Uh, I get this a lot. Well, which one's better? They're not better. They're different. Think upfront fixed cost with a Medicare supplement versus maybe cost with an Advantage plan. And you can switch between them. Uh, election periods may limit when you can do this. We're going to talk about that next. Uh, there can be health questions when you apply for a Medicare supplement when you're switching from an Advantage plan to a supplement. Uh, but all health questions are not the same. Some companies will turn down some things and other companies say, eh, we don't care. We can help you navigate that. Uh, there's never health questions when you're switching from a Medicare supplement plan to a Medicare Advantage. Okay, well let's take a breath now. We've kind of talked about that and let's look at enrollment periods because timing is everything. Uh, as our surf border here is, if you don't hit it just right, you're gonna get wiped out. So let's look at it. Enrollment periods are basically time windows. Uh, this is a, a time that you can make decisions to change stuff and if your window closes, you generally have to wait another 12 months uh, for the next window to open up for you to make a change. So the most common one is new. Uh, I'm new to Medicare. Oh, we're getting a question coming here. Do I want to talk about trial rights? Uh, we have some text questions coming in. Okay, let's do that. 
Uh, I was coming in here. We were talking about Medicare supplement. Let's throw this question out here. So somebody wanted to know, do we want to talk about trial right? We're getting the text question in. When you uh, first sign up for Medicare at age 65 or when you first activate your Part B beyond age 65 because of going off employer coverage, you have some special guarantees, some special uh, yeah, guarantees under uh, Medicare law. And one of those is if you want to try a Medicare Advantage plan when you're first eligible for Medicare, and within the first 12 months, you decide you don't like it. Medicare law says you have a trial right or a test drive period that you can um, leave the Medicare Advantage in that first year and apply for the Medicare supplement with no health questions. Okay. Uh, so again, if you, you have that option and we can go over it a little bit more in detail, I'm going to open up the phone lines here in a little bit for some questions as well. Okay, so we're talking about the time windows. We're talking about I'm new to Medicare. So I'm either getting Medicare due to disability under age 65, end-stage renal disease, Lou Gehrig disease, or I'm just turning 65 for the first time. This is my seven-month window. Uh, my birth month that I turned 65 is my center point three months before and three months after. During this time frame, I can pick to enroll in addition to my Part A and B, I can pick a Medicare Advantage or a Part D plan, and I'm in my IEP, my initial new. So again, the month I turn 65 is my starting point. I can sign up three months before, have it be effective the month I turn uh, eligible for Medicare, or if I wait, then it's delayed a little bit um, after that. Okay, so now the other enrollment period is I'm time for a change. I've had this plan for a while. I want to switch to something new. Well, that's the annual enrollment period. And uh, if you're new to Medicare, if you're within six months of your 65th birthday, you've got all kinds of mail coming into your mailbox now. Wait till you get to the fall when the annual enrollment period. This is October 15th through December 7th of every year. So this always happens. And during this time window, if you're in an Advantage plan and you want to switch back to Original Medicare and get a supplement, or switch from Medicare Advantage plan company X to company Y, change your Part D plans, whatever kind of combination you want to do, you do the paperwork now between October 15th and December 7th, and that change becomes effective January 1 of the following year. So if you're in a Part D plan and they raise the premium or they take your drug off of their formulary list, uh, you could switch. They have to notify you before October 1st. So that way, if you want to, you can look for a different plan and switch to it during the annual enrollment period. If you're happy with the plan you have, you don't want to change. You don't have to. Uh, you can stay in the plan. You don't have to do anything. It'll automatically roll over the next year. But the key thing here is once midnight, December 7th rolls around, you are effectively locked in for another year unless there's some other uh, en enrollment window available to you. For my golfers, we do have uh, what I call my mulligan. Uh, this, is the, this is relatively new. It's called the Medicare Open Enrollment Period. Uh, this is something that isn't advertised. It's here as a, as a oops. Uh, I meant to make a change during the annual and I forgot or I was traveling or maybe I was for whatever reason. It's strictly a switch period. It's not advertised. You won't see commercials about it. And it's only to be used for people who have a MAPD or a Medicare Advantage plan. They can switch to a different one or they can disenroll and go back to uh, red, white, and blue Medicare card, pick up a drug plan, and apply for a supplement. Special enrollment periods. These are more common. Uh, something has happened to you during the year that is special or unique and follows the criteria under government rules that let you switch plans even though the calendar year is uh, still on. Typically, these last for 63 days after that special enrollment period uh, event happened. So here we have some of the more common
common events that will trigger a special enrollment period. Uh, I didn't do a Part D plan. I didn't do a supplement. I didn't do an Advantage plan because I had coverage through an employer, and I've just lost that coverage. The company went out of business. I retired, what have you. Loss of credible drug coverage, permanent move from one state to the other, uh, the Medicare Advantage trial period. Uh, we mentioned that. That was one of the questions that came in. So I tried an Advantage plan for the first year. Didn't like it within that year. I want to get out. Um, there's a special enrollment period that lets me do that, along with uh, extra help uh, special enrollment periods. So that's kind of the, 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 the overview. Again, um, Medicare can be a very complex subject. Uh, after our class today, if you want to go back and watch the recording uh, to refresh stuff, you're more than welcome to. That's what we like about our YouTube live broadcast. And you can also call us and ask questions, send us an email, uh, send us a text message. We're more than happy to, uh, to help you out in that regard. Excuse me. Okay. So now I want to take a look at some common scenarios. We're going to go over some things and give you an opportunity to try to apply some of the learning today to help you figure out some, some issues that we run into. So I've made up a couple of Medicare people. We got Bob and Carol here. <clears throat> well, it's March 2nd. Bob is 68 years old. He's retired and he's had employer coverage through his wife Carol's employment since he was 65. He enrolled in Part A, but he didn't enroll in Part B because he had coverage under his wife's uh, insurance. Well, Carol's retiring at the end of March, and so he's going to lose his employer coverage. What do Bob and Carol need to do in order to make sure that they don't lose, they don't have any interruption in medical coverage? Well, the answer is pretty cut and dry. Bob's going to need to sign up to Part B add it to his Part A, and Carol's going to need to enroll herself in Part A and B by March 31st in order to have coverage on April 1. Now, if Carol is signing up for Social Security, that'll be handled automatically, but nowadays most people are delaying that beyond age 65. Social Security Office is going to take care of the uh, handling the paperwork. Bob is going to be asked to have Carol's employer fill out a paper form that verifies, yes, the reason he doesn't have Part B for the last three years is because he's been continuously covered under Carol's plan uh, and that'll allow him to sign up with the special enrollment period and he won't have any late penalties. So once Bob and Carol have applied for their Part A and B, uh, they don't even have to have the card, they just have filled out the paperwork, they can start shopping for a Part D drug plan, they can decide to evaluate Medicare supplement coverage in the area, uh, they could also choose to evaluate Medicare Advantage uh, with Part D drug coverage if uh, Advantage plans are available in the particular county that they live in. So if they do all that, it's going to run beautifully, no problems. So now we want to take a look at uh, Mary's Dilemma. <clears throat> uh, run into this a lot. Mary, Mary is 74 years old. Uh, she takes very little medicine, two generic high blood pressure pills. She gets them at a local drugstore for $4 a month. She's very frugal. She's never enrolled in a Part D plan because I'm only paying $8 for my medicine. Why do I want to pay $20 a month or more for a Part D plan premium and then have a co-payment for something that's less money than that? Makes sense, right? Well, she's gone without for nine years, and now it's May, and she's just had a heart attack of some type. Uh, everything's fine, but now her doctor is prescribing two brand-name medicines that are costing over $400 a month. What does she do? Well, since it's May, she doesn't have an enrollment window, a enrollment period, a timing window to apply for Part D plan. Uh, so assuming there's nothing special going on, she's going to have to pay 100% of that $400 a month for her medicine, or she can apply with the manufacturer of the drug to see if they have any manufacturer's assistance coupons. Generally, those are based on income. Uh, so uh, she's generally going to be covering 100% of herself. Should she decide to enroll at the next enrollment period timing window, she'll be subject to a late enrollment penalty of 1% for each month for the last nine years that she was eligible but didn't have. So what does that look like? 
Well, since she's been on Medicare for nine years, nine years times 12 months, that's 108 months that she could have had but didn't. We're going to take that uh, and make 1%, so 108% is cat multiplied by the benchmark penalty to figure out what her LEP or late enrollment penalty is. So the benchmark in 2020 is $32.74 times 108%. She has a penalty now of $35.36 added to whatever Part D plan premium she picks. Now, Remember, the government likes to round up to the closest dime, so it actually is rounded up to $35.40, and that will always be there for as long as she enrolls in a Part D plan, if she in fact does. So the end result of Mary's decision for avoiding Medicare Part D for the last nine years is that until January 1, she's going to pay 100% of her medicine for May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, if she signs up uh, for a plan on January 1, then she pays that plan premium plus that $35.40 additional late penalty for the rest of her life. Now, <clears throat> 108 months, 108% sounds huge. I think most people would agree, depending on your income, $35 extra a month may or may not be that big of a deal. You could argue that she got away without paying premium for 108 months. So um, it, it's there be aware of it and, and make that calculation, make your own decision. Now I want to take a look at Dick. Um, this is a scenario that we're finding more and more. Dick, 63, he's single. He's worked for Acme Company since he got out of college. Uh, and he's now faced with a early retirement offer. The company's downsizing. And rather than just being laid off, we're going to give you early retirement. Acme is a big employer. They employ a bunch of people in the area. Well, what they've done is they've said, we're going to give you one month of free health insurance for each year you were employed. So he's like going, well, heck, I got 40 months of coverage. I've been here for 40 years. So he does the math and he decides to go ahead and accept that offer because he can still get another job somewhere else. But he's just going to figure he's going to have free health insurance from the company until he's 67. So he'll ride that pony. And then uh, and when that runs out, he figures he'll switch over to Medicare and pick himself up a supplement. No harm, no foul. Beautiful. Okay, well, two years later when Dick turns 65, he does sign up for Part A. But he turns down Part B because he doesn't want to pay the premium. He, he's got enough credits where Part A is no charge, but he doesn't want to pay the Part B premium because I got free insurance through my company, through my former employer, uh, and I got another 18 months or so before that runs out, and it's been working beautiful. Okay. Well, six months go by, and Dick goes to see the doctor. He presents his red, white, and blue Medicare card that shows Part A only, and his former employer's group insurance card to the doctor's billing office, just like he's done for years. 30 days later, he opens his mail, and he gets a bill from the doctor saying Medicare has denied his doctor bill, and so did his former company's insurance. He is livid and he doesn't understand why his insurance has been denied. Well, here's part of the rub. When we were talking about um, Medicare and other insurance, page 18 of your Medicare and you states, if you or your spouse is still working and you have health coverage through that specific employer or union, Dick doesn't work for Acme anymore. It was an early retirement offer or a COBRA benefit. Then you can delay Part B. So here again on the Medicare page, it shows coverage based on current employment doesn't include COBRA or retiree. And in this case, a uh, early retirement settlement benefit, that's retiree coverage. You have to have Part B. So you or your spouse must be actively working to delay Part B and the employers with 20 or more, and Acme employs a lot of people, their employer coverage is considered primary to Medicare. Retiree coverage, or COBRA, or in this case, a continuation of benefits following an early retirement, 
while many times it's quite good and quite comprehensive, it's not based on active employment and generally requires the member to enroll in Part B. Retiree coverage is secondary, pays after Medicare. So since Dick did not have Medicare Part B, he didn't have primary insurance. And under the law, the secondary plan can't pay because there's nothing to be secondary to. This is a huge problem, and unfortunately, we run into it from time to time. So remember this grid when we were talking about the rules. And again, you'll find this on page 20 of the 2020 Medicare and You booklet. If you have retiree insurance, insurance from a former employer, Medicare must pay first. You must enroll in Medicare Parts A and B. So now Dick is in a pickle. <clears throat> he has to wait for the Part B of Medicare general enrollment period, that January 1 through March 31 uh, timing window, to fill out paperwork to add Part B. He will pay a late enrollment penalty of 10% added for each full year he delayed coverage, and his Part B application, even though he does it January, February, March, it won't be effective until the following July. And again, you'll see that on page 18 of the 2020 Medicare and You. So since Dick has no Part B coverage until July 1, he has no coverage for the outpatient services of Part B. Doctor's visits, emergency rooms, labs, x-rays, testing outpatient surgeries, all of that won't take effect till July 1 as well. So whenever you're dealing with an employer coverage and Medicare decisions, check with your benefit administrator to see how your coverage works with Medicare. Look it up in the Medicare new booklet. Uh, give us a call. We've got the number here on the screen. We're more than happy to help you avoid these types of problems. Well, Medicare <clears throat> can be quite confusing. Uh, our time is almost running out, and there's a lot of things on Medicare. As I mentioned, I, I, I jokingly refer to it sometimes as the never-ending onion. You could always peel back layer after layer. But I would greatly appreciate candid feedback on our program. Uh, if you like uh, what we've done, uh, please consider giving us a, a thumbs up here on our YouTube channel. Uh, you may also want to consider uh, subscribing to our channel. We do put out uh, periodic updates uh, on, uh, on our Medicare class. We do these every month. Uh, plus, we'll do uh, shorter topics, uh, shorter videos on uh, uh, timely topics, maybe uh, just to update you on what's going on. So <clears throat> at this, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and open up the phone lines now. <clears throat> there we go. So if you'd like to ask a question, if you didn't get to ask it earlier, Go ahead and give us a call now at 361-0331. That's 913-361-0331. That'll come right here into the office. I'll uh, pull the microphone over to the phone. And any questions that you wanted to ask uh, live, uh, we'll go ahead and take. There is about a 10-second delay in the live broadcast. So if you are watching and you call in, please, please, please mute your uh, the audio on your laptop or whatever device you're watching the live broadcast on. So that will eliminate that echo when you call because that will be most, uh, most painful, most unpleasant. Okay, so while we're waiting, because I know there's a delay, I'm gonna go over and just kind of review a few things here. So again, on our website, if you're looking for additional resources, and again, our website is strictly amskc.com. I always got too many screens going on here. Here we go. So if you pull up our website, and again, there's the, the address down below. We've got a lot of helpful information for you. Again, you can find our YouTube channel link to see videos, updates. You can also see any future events we might be having as far as classes. And under the helpful resources tab, we put a lot of information in here the Medicare and you, Medicare costs at a glance. Uh, Daryl, I, I didn't get all those uh, deductibles or copays under Medicare. It's all right here. Same as the premiums. Uh, understanding the enrollment periods, the timing windows. If you need to add Part B late um, after your uh, employer coverage ended, 
There's the Part B form there. There's the form that the employer fills out. Uh, there's also forms to set up paying your Part B premiums. We put them all here in one place, tried to make the more common forms very simple and easy to get to. Uh, again, if you um, need additional help or resources, if you go here to our website, click our YouTube channel, uh, it'll take you right to where we've got. Uh, we do have playlists set here. The playlist will take you to uh, our videos that show updates, what we put out, our upcoming Medicare classes. We do some shorter lessons and common mistakes, and we're always putting stuff out there. So um, if you like something, give us a thumbs up. Uh, it's always helpful, too. Um, it helps us to better help other Medicare beneficiaries. If you give us a thumbs up, if you subscribe to our channel, uh, YouTube recognizes that and helps push us up so that other people that are looking for information can find it as well. So we appreciate that. Okay. Well, I'm assuming nobody's going to call in for questions now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's wrap this thing up here. Okay. Get rid of that. Boom. Okay. <clears throat> well, again, I'd love your feedback. Please leave a comment. If you're watching the recording, um, give us a, a feedback in the comment section below. If you got a question, give us a call. We don't bite. Uh, if you want to just send us an email, uh, our general inbox is info at amskc.com. Uh, ask your questions. We'll, we'll give you your answer back. Um, I've talked a little bit about that. <clears throat> If you're like a lot of people, uh, you may be overwhelmed by some of your Medicare decisions. We can help you. We are licensed insurance agents. It's what we do. It's how we make our, uh, our living, helping people avoid mistakes and getting the, the plan that best fits their uh, health care needs and budget. Give us a call. We're happy to help. Again, it costs you nothing to have us do uh, the homework for you. We're paid a commission by the companies when you enroll. So whether you want a Medicare supplement and a drug plan, a Medicare Advantage plan, we are have licenses with about 42 different insurance companies. We can quote them all for you, help you make sense of it. Uh, if you look us up on Google, uh, Google Businesses, Google Maps here, just go in and, and Google Maps, type in Affordable Medicare Supplements. It'll take you to our business page. We are located just south of the High V here at 95th and Antioch. And we do have our office open for uh, in-face uh, in office visits. Um, we can also do Zoom meetings or telephone meetings uh, if you'd rather do something like that. Uh, as you can tell, we have a lot of fun with uh, technology. I'm a self proclaimed game gadget guy, so in many cases with the uh, insurance companies cooperations, uh, we can help you do everything all over the phone uh, and through the internet, so it's, it's fairly handy. And again, whether you sign up uh, for a Medicare plan yourself online, over the phone with a telesales organization, uh, to the mail, uh, there's a commission paid to somebody. So if we help you, we get the commission, and now you've got a local face-to-face -face agency that can provide you service down the road because it's not a question of if you have a problem. It's more a question of when. And most people really like the fact that as a local agency, they can call us and uh, if they want to come in and help us go over stuff. Uh, most people would prefer to talk to someone face-to-face, -face, get their problems resolved, rather than 1-800-PUSH-1 for this, 2 for that, 3 to throw your phone out the window. So um, I've been running this for uh, now for 27 years. I've been licensed since 1993. Uh, and my philosophy on how we run the business, how the agents that are affiliated with AMS run, um, I'm a big believer that what goes around comes around. And uh, we get what we want in life by helping you figure out what you need. And our job is to help you get what you want. Uh, and that makes uh, what goes around comes around work beautiful for everybody. So, well, that's it, folks. That's all I got. Thank you so much for attending. Again, give us your feedback. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, give us a call. Give us an email. Shoot us a text. Uh, we can actually take texts on these uh, numbers here. So um, that's all I got. Thank you, everyone. Good day.